At the same time, Denver's mayor and police chief are working on a separate public safety plan. And they want to focus on reducing violent crime while establishing better relationships with the people they serve. And they've identified five high crime areas in the city, South Federal and West Alameda, Colfax and Broadway, Colfax and Yosemite, 47th and Peoria, and MLK Jr. and Holly. As Denver 7 CB Cotton reports, while the city plans to take steps like increasing foot patrols, community groups are calling for more support. He just graduated, earning his master's degree. These are more than just photos. Wesley Osbury has his master's degree from Harvard University. For Narcy Jackson, they're the purpose behind his life's work. We really push, don't be just a student athlete, be a scholar athlete. Jackson has been mentoring to Denver youth through the nonprofit he co-founded, Athletics and Beyond, since 2005. PJ Gallegos is in the Navy. The nonprofit is known for its work in historically under-resourced areas, such as the Montbello neighborhood, a neighborhood that's home to a street address with increased crime over the past year. That's according to Denver leaders. Together, as the mayor indicated, we can address these. So on Monday, Mayor Michael Hancock, alongside Police Chief Paul Pazin, announced the formation of the Transformation and Policy Division, a strategy to address violent crime and police reform. It is critical that we point out that uh, these are proven strategies to focus on crime while fully uh, developing the uh, support of our residents in order to have residents and business owners take a more collaborative uh, approach, a more uh, supportive approach to their own safety. Some details of what the new division will do, vague. Others, more concrete. Denver police say one of the solutions could look like more patrols in areas like this one, 47th and Peoria, identified as one of the hot spots for violence. But community organizers say they're already doing the work. They just need more support. The community can make the difference in what we need. It, the community can step up and say, hey, we're going to make sure that this program or these programs or this center that, that's been put up it survives. Jackson says he and other nonprofits have struggled with funding for years. It's why it took over a decade to make their new facility a reality. That's going to be wrestling math. Something that graduates of the nonprofit saw firsthand. If we could be able to fund more nonprofit organizations and resources, for example, Narcy's organization and many others, we will be able to put ourselves in a better position to see less crime, less acts of violence, and more self-love in our community. The loopholes and, and the disqualifications that, that exist, it really discourages grassroots organizations from applying in the first place. In a series of emails, the mayor's office told Denver 7 that funding decisions for the city's new multi-agency division haven't yet been made, but called community support foundational for improvements. In reality, all it really is is a community with lack of resources that needs more funding and it needs more money in people's pockets for them to grow. Empower us to do the work that you say you want done to minimize and reduce violence or prevent violence from happening in the first place. In Montbello, I'm CB Cotton, Denver 7. For an in-depth look at Denver's latest moves on police reform, check out the Denver 7 Plus app for your Roku, Amazon Fire, Apple TV, or Android device. It's very easy. Just search Denver 7. You can watch for free. And if you want to dig into that complete list of the 112 task force recommendations, we have them all posted for you on our website, thedenverchannel.com. Today, Colorado's Supreme Court ruled that lawmakers can allow school districts to raise property taxes without voter approval. A group of lawmakers asked the court to review the legality of a new bill. It would gradually raise local property taxes, collecting millions of dollars for K-12 schools. Public school funding lagged for years because of limits put in place by the Taxpayers' Bill of Rights. It says voters must approve all tax hikes. The Colorado Sun reports the bill passed the legislature Monday. Sponsors say it could generate more than $90 million for schools next year. The cost of health care is one of the biggest worries for families in our state. Denver 7 is committed to exposing problems in the system and searching for solutions. And tonight we're focusing on the out of control cost of infertility treatments. Denver 7 investigative reporter Jennifer Kovaleski takes a deep dive into a loophole that could derail many couples plans to have kids. It was really hard. When you're trying to grow a family. We just did everything we could do on our own. Time matters. Because if I implant the one, then I'm a full year older before we're 
trying to get more eggs. For Megan Moody, her chance to have her own baby came with these drugs. Full of hope. There's so many of these. And a huge out-of-pocket price tag. I even, as an attorney, had to save up for so many years in order to have access to fertility treatments. How much money would you say you're in total? The medication so far has been about $20,000. If this round of in vitro fertilization or IVF doesn't work, she was counting on insurance to pick up the cost. Little needles, big needles. But now a new federal ruling is preventing her and thousands of Colorado families from getting that coverage. I don't have the ability to pay for it again, so I don't know what we'll do. Aaron and I have spent $35,500. Last year, Denver 7 Investigates first exposed how costly infertility treatments were forcing couples onto the black market. A thriving online marketplace where people are buying and selling cheaper leftover IVF drugs. The other ones that I'm selling are these refrigerated ones. Shortly after our story, state lawmakers stepped in, passing a law to force insurance companies to cover infertility treatments starting next year. Honestly, it's one of the most important bills that I've run. Representative Carrie Tipper spearheaded the legislation. I'm kind of heartbroken because I know what it's like to wait. To give you context, here's what happened. After Colorado passed the Building Families Act, the federal government got involved because of the Affordable Care Act. It ruled that expanded coverage for infertility treatment would increase the federal tax credit for certain health plans. All that means smaller businesses and those who are self-employed will not have coverage. But large employers with more than 100 employees will have to cover infertility treatment next year. I know many people who were, who were very excited and thinking, okay, we can wait for that. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Moody's law firm is one of those small businesses with fewer than 100 employees who now won't have coverage. There's definitely a whole group of people who don't have $50,000 who just don't even have a chance. It's exclusively an equity issue. What would you say to couples who feel this is an equity issue? I hear you, and I know that this is a painful thing for us to have to, to come to you all and tell you that this is something that we can't put in place. He's the head of Colorado's Division of Insurance. But it is something that we're going to continue to fight for. It's something that we think um, should be in place. Insurance Commissioner Michael Conway says he's hoping the Biden administration will reverse the federal decision and require companies to cover IVF for all. We are, are confident that we can make um, convincing arguments. As for why 18 other states have been able to mandate some kind of infertility coverage. This new regulatory requirement went into place last year just as our legislation was working through. It's embarrassing. Dr. Alex Polinsky is in the business of making babies. It is considered to be a medical condition. Unfortunately, as far as insurance coverage, it is often treated uh, like uh, a cosmetic surgery. He calls the ruling disappointing and says many patients were waiting for next year to start treatment. But there's a lot of people who are really putting it off. And so I would really hate to see them crushing their dreams. I don't want anyone else to have to go through this. Moody is just trying to stay hopeful this time will be her time. Obviously hopeful that it won't fail, but if it does fail, I don't know what we'll do. I'm sorry that we couldn't get this across the finish line for, for you right now, but we are fighting to do everything we can to make sure that you're covered. The insurance commissioner says 2023 is the earliest we could see coverage for small businesses and the self-employed. It's also important to note this coverage only applies to insurance plans the state regulates. We will stay on top of this. I'm Denver 7 investigative reporter Jennifer Kovaleski. The Nuggets in hot pursuit of a home win tonight, and they needed to get the playoffs back on track. The three. Got it. Much needed repairs let go for months. I looked these mushrooms up online, and these are exactly carpet mushrooms, and there's mold underneath the carpet. Fed up with unsafe living conditions, people at one condo complex contact Denver 7 for help. All clear on the radar screen. I'll let you know when the thunderstorms may return. Wildfire worries grow. A deeper look at what's driving persistent drought conditions in parts of our state. Got it. Uh, that'll work. Okay.
When you pay HOA fees, you expect things will be kept up to a certain standard. Potholes, leaks, and mushrooms growing out of your carpet, probably not what you pictured. Our Sloan Dickey spoke with some people in Aurora who contacted Denver 7 desperate for a fix. Rotting stairs, number one. Yvonne Burgess pays more than $300 per month for her HOA at the Sterling Commons condos in Aurora. Loose bars here, all the dead trees, as you can see here. Everything's dead. And she has one question. These potholes are getting worse and worse and worse by the week. What is she getting for her money? The center unit is not working. We can't get our mail. And it's been that way for over a year. It's bad. It's this whole community has gone downhill. And she's not alone. Her neighbors have issues of their own. There's been water entering my home since 2018. As you can see, there's water damage on the ceiling. I looked these mushrooms up online, and these are exactly carpet mushrooms, and there's mold underneath the carpet. Mastino Management took over ownership in early 2019, and residents who spoke with Denver 7 says they've been unresponsive. They don't want to mow the lawns. Uh, they don't want to fix the sprinklers. They don't want to do anything but collect our money. The problems, they say, stem well before Mastino took over, but many of the issues, they say, are persistent. All these things are their responsibilities. It's, it's, it's not ours. And dangerous. And I'm really frustrated and I really want to move due to that. A representative with Mastino declined to comment for the story, but did say that solutions have been proposed in the past and turned down by residents. They're paid on time, but they don't want to help us. The residents say they've brought the issues up for years and say they just want one thing. Hopefully we can get some help. And contact Denver 7 will continue seeking answers. Sloan Dickey. Denver 7.